Hey everyone, welcome to Hot Seed, a show where we give you insights for your business and for your personal development, and we'll see what else we can cook up. And uh, this show is brought to you by Small Business Trends, so thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Ramon Ray, I'm your host, a, a speaker, entrepreneur, a lover of pancakes, bacon and eggs, and a lot of other things. And so that's me, and hello. And I'm joined today by our guest host, uh, Sean Hessinger, who's executive editor of Small Business Trends. Sean, how are you, and what's up in your world? Oh, very good. Uh, busy as always, putting small business trends together. Uh, that's a never-ending process, of course. So. I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, thanks for being uh, my uh, wingman here and co-host. And uh, uh, Peter Shankman, my friend, and uh, many of you may know Peter Shankman as the founder of Haro. That was, he founded that and sold that some years ago. Uh, but Haro, I still think, is one of the most popular ways that small business can get PR and marketing. But Peter, I know that one of your big, big passions, Peter, is uh, ADD or ADHD, and we can talk about that. You can educate me on that a lot more. But Peter's a speaker, an entrepreneur, a skydiver, a marathon runner, and a lot of other things. So Peter, thanks for spending some time with us today to talk about really uh, these are my words, not yours, but disabilities, how we can use them, quote unquote, as an advantage. So thanks for joining us, Peter. Anything for you, Ron. Appreciate that. So Peter, let's set the stage really for this about this aspect of why this is even important to you. Your book is out faster than normal. Uh, why was this such a passion for you? You've talked about it kind of at length, but for the audience who doesn't know much about you, why don't we start there? Share with us why this uh, topic uh, is important to you. Yeah, so... So, so growing up, I didn't, you know, ADHD wasn't a thing in the 70s and 80s. When I was growing up in school, it was uh, sit down, you're disrupting the class disease. Yeah. And um, I could never understand why I was always in trouble and always, you know, no matter what I wanted to do, I'd always say the wrong thing at the wrong time. And I'd always uh, interrupt the teacher. And, and I was usually funny as hell, but, you know, it was not, it was never the right time. And, and uh, very few friends and, and school was tough. And, you know, it wasn't until my mid 30s that I actually got diagnosed with ADHD. Um, by then, what I realized is that I had, been putting, I had been putting into play tons and tons of sort of self-medication tools mm. and uh, self-correcting tools that, you know, allowed me to sort of live the life I wanted to lead. And what I realized when I got diagnosed was that I was actually using um, th these, these tools were actually allowing me to take advantage of the good parts of ADHD, of which there are many, mm -hmm. um, and sort of downplay the bad parts. Now, for the uninitiated, ADHD essentially just means that your brain doesn't produce as much dopamine, serotonin, and adrenaline as a normal brain. So, you know, when, I, when, when you have to do a project that you love, it's very easy to do a project that you love because you're excited about doing it. So your brain automatically produces those things. When you have to do something you don't like, expense reports, whatever. Um, in my case, growing up, math class, you know, my normal people would say, okay, you know, their brain would be like, okay, you have to do this. You don't love it. So here's a little extra dopamine. It'll keep you focused. Mm -hmm. My brain never produced that. So I would always look around for other things to catch my excitement, right? Hence the squirrel or whatever it is. And, you know, you're looking for that. So over time, I realized that I was doing things. Um, you know, I, I ran my first 5k when I was 29. Most people run a 5k. They, they, they check that off and they, you know, they show their medal and they move on with their lives. I signed up for a marathon. Right. Um, you know, I went for my first tandem skydive in 2000. Uh, most people check that off. They buy have over 500 jumps in my own gear. You know, it's so what I realized essentially I was, I was finding ways to create the dopamine, serotonin, and adrenaline that my body was creating. And in the process, was creating a pretty good life for myself. Mm -hmm. And over time, I realized that the majority of people who have figured out sort of how to use their ADHD to their advantage have done the same thing. We've had people on our podcast, Tony Robbins, Seth Godin, um, uh, Cameron Harold. Uh, Dave Needleman, who founded JetBlue, um, all these people who, who have ADHD and, and, and fully admit that it is because of that faster brain that they've learned how to harness um, that they are able to, to do as well as they have. And what I realized is that the conversation around ADD and ADHD needs to change. It is still considered a disability. I don't like that word. Uh, I don't believe we are cursed with ADHD. I believe it is a gift. Mm. Um, I believe that if you, under, you know, if you have a Honda and a Ferrari, you're going to choose the Ferrari, but if you, all you've been told all your life is that you only know how to drive a Honda, you know, you're going to take that, that Ferrari, not know how to drive it and smack it into a tree because you're trying to drive it like a Honda. So you have to understand how to, how to sort of drive your faster brain. And so that's one of the things that I've been focusing on is teaching people that, Hey, you know what? You're not broken. Mm. And, uh, there are ways to use this gift you have, um, that can make you tremendously happy. And, in the two years we've, we've had the podcast, we've had, you know, thousands of people have emailed me and, and 
thank you. You're the first person to tell me that I'm, I'm not broken. I'm not crazy. I love it. <laughs> and I just, I think it's a story that needs to be told. You know, I, I'm not anti-medication, but mm. we seem to be, medication seems to be the first line of defense here. We're putting kids who are five years old on amphetamines because they're acting like they're five years old. And I have a real problem with that, you yeah. know, and I, I have a prescription that I rarely take. I rarely take it because I do th- I get up super early. I go to the gym. I have organized my life in such a way that I get the, the chemistry in my brain that I need to do the things I want to do. No, I love it. And Sean, listen, I, Sean, I don't go skydiving on a regular basis, Sean. I, do you, Sean, do you, would you rather jump out of an airplane <laughs> to go on a marathon, Sean, or edit some articles? Which one would you like to do? Well, probably edit some articles, honestly. Uh, yeah, probably. Rather than jump out of an airplane, probably. Yeah. The, about the closest I got to that conversation is I o- often uh, also uh, caused trouble in class when I was a kid, <laughs> but I guess a lot of people. Yeah, for sure. And Sean, have you all at Small Business Trends, have you guys kind of covered this topic about uh, whether ADHD or other things? I know that many of the sharks on Shark Tank, in fact, it's not ADHD, but what's the other one, Peter or Sean? Um, is it ADHD or I think well, there's OCD, there's ADHD, there's OCD, there's ADD, there's autism, there's, I mean, autism. there's so many things. Yeah. Yeah, so, there's and, all, you know, one of the things, sorry, go ahead. There's Sean. all kinds of isms, yeah. yeah. But go ahead, Peter. Well, we, one of the things that's interesting to understand that, that from a business standpoint, and this is what I've started to realize is, is a huge audience and I've been invited to speak um, so far on this like a handful of times and it's starting to grow. There is a, um, some studies that I've seen are basically saying that anywhere from four to five, um, in the next 10 years, four to five of your new hires for your Mm. business, uh, whether they're coming out of college or whatever, are going to be somewhere on that neuroatypical scale. Okay. If you as a business owner are not prepared to work with Right. Someone who's very typical, you know, and give them sort of the tools they need to succeed. Give them the tools they need to succeed. They will blow your business out of the water. But if you try to, if you try to make them behave like everyone else, it's going to be, you're going to have a really bad time. You know, I don't go into meetings without uh, having walked up several flights of steps or done jumping jacks or something, because that's what I know I need to do. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't hold meetings during the day if I can help it. I had a meeting this morning with the business editor of Mashable and we had our meeting at 6am and I took her to a spin class. (laughs) <laughs> right. And, and after the spin class, I was so, you know, full of that dopamine and fun. I mean, like we sat down and we got, we covered three hours worth of work in like 20 minutes. It was great, but that's how I work. Right. And we're seeing that more and more people in the business world, not only are going into the business world as employees, but are also, um, as customers, right? If you have an audience that's ADD, ADHD, you're looking at a 2.77, 2.7 second attention span. You better damn well know how to market to them the way they want. For sure. And Sean, I want to turn to you about what you guys are doing in the business world as far as this. What have you guys covered on small business trends on this topic of ADHD and other things like this? Have you guys covered this? Have you talked about it? What's your sense, Sean, that the business community needs to understand? And I would say not even to, to, to use, and, and, but to leverage for your own business to be faster than normal, as Peter books, Peter's book says. Sean, what do you your take on this from small business trends? Well, I can't claim that we've uh, covered a lot about ADHD or those disabilities specifically, but I mean, one thing that you hear from uh, small business owners all the time and entrepreneurs all the time, uh, and I know in my own experience is that you have to work to your strengths. Um, and that's what I'm hearing Peter say a lot. Uh, you know, for me, for example, I, 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 I run an increasingly uh, complex website. Um, I, something a lot of people don't know about me, I have a, a terrible memory. A, a, a terrible memory compared to most people. I keep everything written down. I have to keep everything straight. Some people could look at that and say, well, you know, I think it's great when people have a wonderful memory, but some people don't. You have to learn how to work to your, to your strengths, whatever they are. And I, I would say conversely, uh, the nice thing about small business owners is you can, you can build your environment to suit your, your weaknesses or your strengths. But also when it comes to employees, you know, when you manage employees, your, your employees, your, your people are your success. And so uh, if you have somebody who can perform a great job, but you, you have a, a strict way of managing them, yeah. that it just isn't working. Uh, you need to start deciding, do, do you want the good performance or, or, or do, you want the, the, do you want them to fit into your, uh, your criteria, your mold? And that's, I think, where uh, small businesses actually have the ability to differentiate a lot from larger sort of one-size-fits-all sort of enterprises where everybody's kind of got to, you know, you got to be the square peg fitting in the round hole. So I think, you know, my first, you know, you're 100% right. I mean, you're 100% right, Sean. My first job was with America Online, and they let us work any way we wanted to work as long as we get our job done, right? And so this is my first real career job. I get out of that. I move back to New York. I take a job with a magazine. 
uh, what do you mean I have to be in at 8.30? Wait, wait, you want me to go for lunch at a certain time? What is this, Russia? You know, and, and, and that job lasted uh, a total of three weeks. And that was the last real job I ever had that went out on my own, right? And it became this concept of, you know, I'm going to give this. And again, it was that ADHD saying, you know, give it a shot. What's the worst that can happen? You don't make any money and you go get a real job. You know, and it's been 19 years that I haven't had to get a real job. I think that one of the reasons that people on the sort of neuroatypical spectrum tend to be entrepreneurs is because, again, no middle ground. Okay, like, like many people with ADHD, I have exactly two speeds. And Ramon, you've heard me say this before. My two speeds are namaste and I'll cut a bitch. And there is absolutely no middle ground in there, right? I don't, have, I don't have any middle ground, but all the way off or all the way on. And so when I am working on things that I love and I'm doing things that I love, I am 100,000 miles an hour at any given time. And that is how I like to live, right? And, and you know, it's difficult for some people to get that, for their employers to understand that or for them to understand, you know, why do I feel so unsatisfied and unsatiated? And, and at that point, if they ask yourself, well, maybe going out on your own isn't such a bad idea as well. Give it a shot at least. Mm-hmm. Peter, let's talk into Peter and Sean about some of the life hacks. I know I, I was reading uh, your book and you've talked about this beyond that as well, some of the life hacks. And what I mean by this, it seems like you have some physical things that you might suggest to people, not just with ADHD, but when I was going through your book, these are things that I can do. And sometimes I wonder what I do have. I'm sure I have something. I don't know what it's called. But the point is, let's talk about some of the, the, the personal things that people can do. You mentioned push-ups and, and jumping jacks and things like this. But you also, I know, have some very good business tools and things like this. So personally speaking, any other things that you want to suggest or talk about, Peter, that we can uh, do for our personal bodies that you want to go over again? Yep. Okay. So you just, yeah, you froze up a little bit, but you just came back in. So, you know, for me, I am very aware of how my brain works and how I am very, very good at talking myself out of anything. I can talk myself out. I should go to the gym. Oh, well, you know what? There's supposed to be a comet passing Jupiter and it might just on the off chance that it changes direct. I should stay home. Right. So I can convince myself of anything. So to, to get out of that, knowing that, that, that exercise is key to my functioning, right? I have to work out every day to do that. I set my alarm at 4 a.m. At 3.45 a.m., I have um, electronic Internet of Things lighting that starts to, all of my apartment that starts to come up, and the Internet of Things lighting comes up. So by 4 a.m., the lights are on, the alarm goes off, I open my eyes, it's bright, it's sunny in my room, plus I go to sleep in my gym clothes. Okay, so the second I wake up, I put on my sneakers and I'm dressed. It's kind of hard to go back to bed like that. When I'm done with the gym, um, my closet has exactly two sides to it. The first side, is, and they're labeled, the first side says... Um, uh, office or travel, and it's t-shirts and jeans. The other side says speaking or TV, and it's button-down shirts, jackets, and jeans. That's it. You know, if I had to find my, all my vests, my suits, my shirt, those are all in my daughter's room, right, in her closet. She's four. If I had to, if I had to, uh, you know, find all my, look at my suits every day, God, I remember that vest. Laura gave me that vest. I wonder how she's doing. I should look her up. It's three hours later. I'm naked in the living room on Facebook. I haven't left the house, <laughs> right? So you have to be very well aware. You have to understand your, yourself and understand how you work. Um, I quit drinking, right? I didn't have a drinking problem. I wasn't going out and getting wasted and doing anything stupid, but I don't have one drink. I have six drinks, right? And then I wake up the next morning and I'm not going to the gym at 4 a.m. because I'm just getting home at 2 a.m. And so, and then, then that happens. Well, I ruined that day, so I might as well order crappy food. And, you know, all of a sudden, my cheat day has become two weeks, right? Mm-hmm. That's not okay. And, and that negatively affects me. So, you know, things like that, that you know, I, I'm well aware of, of the fact that, again, I have, I have off and all the way on. Um, there are people who can order a pizza. Uh, mm-hmm. They decide they want to have a pizza. They order a pizza. They have two slices. They put the rest in the fridge. That's called leftover pizza. I've never had leftover pizza in my life. That's just... <laughs> I have... <laughs> It's not a real thing for me. You know, I order a pizza, I eat the pizza. There's no right. leftover. So you, again, you have to be very aware of how your brain works. And essentially, there's a, a doctor by the name of Ned Hallowell. He's sort of the grandfather of ADD. And he said one, a wonderful line that's so true. ADHD is like having a Ferrari with bicycle brakes, mm. right? And so you really need to be aware of, of how your brain works, what's good for you, what's bad for you. You know, my speaking contract is just like yours. Pay me, pay my expenses, I'll come speak except in Las Vegas, where I have a rider that says, I will only do a 1230 keynote. And the client, I don't have to, the speaker does not have to be on the ground from wheels down to wheels up for more than eight hours. Because it seems I, like you're very self-aware, Peter, like you're very aware of you have to be. your limitations are. You have to be, and I'm the first to admit it. I'm like, you know, hey, you want to drink? No, that's not a good thing. Why? Mm. I drank enough in my life. You know, and it's just like, and, and, and I'm fully aware and I own that. And owning that is actually, I think the best thing you could possibly do. Once, once I stopped caring 
I, when I quit drinking, I said, you know, I was always afraid. Oh, what are people going to say? In the two years that I've quit, you know how many people have said something? Nothing. No one. Exactly no one. It, they don't care. As, I've learned this. If, if primarily if something doesn't affect you, you're not going to care about it. Right. Most people only care about things that affect them. Yeah. No, you're right. It's, it's very true. Sean, I want to turn to patriotism tools. And I know you, Sean, you, you or you personally or you guys cover a ton of business tools in uh, Peter, not only in your book, but again, knowing you, Peter, for the years, you know a lot, a lot of tools that we can use to business owners. So first, Sean, let me turn to you. Any one or two favorite tools that you use? I mean, I know we all have our favorites. I'd love to hear what you're using, Sean, or what you talk about on Small Business Trends. And then Peter, man, drop some science on us, kind of what are some gems of tools you're using to boost productivity or help us make more money or whatever you want to share. But first, Sean, why don't you uh, share anything you guys are working on, tools or favorite things you guys are using? Gosh, you know, one of the things that, that uh, with all this talk of exercise that uh, re reminded me uh, was the fact that, the, you know, the other extreme is true for a lot of small business owners. And we, we cover this a lot, uh, the fact that, uh, you know, inactivity and, and things like this, because people don't know, uh, don't know themselves. They don't realize, they, they think to themselves, they're going to, you know, they're going to get exercise or they're going to do this or they're going to do that. And um, their lifestyle changes with starting a business or something. Maybe they start a business in the home or something like that. So there's an awful lot of tools uh, uh, that help you keep track of, of, of your fitness, how active you're being, um, you know, uh, it, it keep track of, of, of weight, of diet, of all these kinds of things. The things that you don't initially think of as business tools. But really, if you're not keeping, if you're if you're not keeping yourself healthy mentally and physically, uh, you, you really can't function. Which is why you see a lot of people with burnout in in, uh, in, in jobs and things like that. You know. Well, and why did you say thank you, Peter? Tell me, why does this burnout seem like it triggered something in you? Why is that? As a as a as an entrepreneur, um, and an entrepreneur in this industry for 19 years, I have lost three friends to suicide because mm -hmm. they didn't believe that anyone to talk to. Okay, and that's just bullshit. All right, we you know we are so focused on getting the product, the most the viable product or getting the funding or getting whatever that we tend to forget that the most important project we're going to work on is us. And we tend to ignore that. And we can't do anything beneficial for anyone if we are not taking care of ourselves. And I am just so strong a believer of that. You know, I, I go to sleep at eight 30 at night. If I can, if I can, um, I put my daughter down at eight, I'm in bed by eight 30 because I do well with eight hours of sleep. Right. I'm up super early. We don't, we're not invincible. Yeah. And, and I'm sorry, but we're not. And, and we need to desperately take it. You know, for me, the, the, again, the ADHD, OCD thing, it's, it's great because um, men lie, women lie, uh, uh, animals don't lie, and numbers don't lie, right? So I, uh, everything I do, I track the data. I have a 175-day movement streak going on my Apple Watch. You know, I have, I, I use my fitness pal. And, and once I start to see those numbers, it's very, very hard. You don't want to break that cycle. I don't want to go back to zero. There's a great uh, a House of Cards quote where, uh, Doug Stamper, this horrible man, this horrible, horrible man, uh, talks about how he counts votes. He counts everything. He counts numbers for a living. The one number that scares him the most is, is his sobriety number because if he has one drink, he's back to zero and he ends it with uh, F to zero, right? It's this phenomenal mm -hmm. speech, but it's so true. We get very, very tied into the, the, the numbers and, and that's good, but we got to take care of ourselves. So you, you, oxygen mask theory, right? They tell you on a plane, put on your own oxygen mask before yep. helping others because you can't help others if you're dead. That's true. So, Peter, what are your, if you had to think of your top, uh, to that point, if your top three or four business productivity tools, we know we can, we take better care of ourselves now that we've done that. And thank you, Sean, for that input. Anything that comes to mind for you, Peter, on the business side or apps or anything that you're using that everybody has to have and download? There is an amazing tool called Ohm Writer, O-M-M -M Writer. It's for the Mac and the PC and it turns your entire screen white and it, it just, it, uh, it kills all your incoming uh, connections. So incoming uh, messages, emails, mm -hmm. what pop-ups, everything. It just Messenger basically, mm -hmm. yeah, it shuts down your computer, gives you a white screen to type, put on headphones. It plays like some Enya type music. It's very chill. And it's a wonderful way to get into your zone of focus. That's what I use. That's the only thing I use when I write and I do all my writing on airplanes. And I don't know if you'd call this a business tool, but I am, I have been known to book a flight somewhere and go somewhere with no reason to go there except to write. And it's, I, I swear by it. Sean, I think you should try that, man. I think you should <laughs> download the tool. Tell Anita to buy you a ticket to some far off place. <laughs> Longest flight you yeah. can get in the United, leaving from the United States is 17 hours uh, from, uh, from uh, LA to, uh, where the hell is it? LA to Singapore. And I, I cannot recommend it enough. Yes. Awesome. 
Um, Peter, anything you wanted to tell to, to those who are, don't have, and again, don't have these special gifts, those who don't have the gifts looking askance at others, and you've said somewhat already, maybe in a different way, what would you tell them? And Sean, I'd like you to comment on this after Peter's done, but what, what do you want to tell those who are saying, why are they like this? Why is Peter like this? Look at Peter. Why he, is he's weird. What would you tell, let's say, us? I, I, am, I embrace my weirdness. I love my weirdness. It's the greatest thing about me, I think. But I will say that, you know, the number one thing I get from people, so I run a mastermind group, a, 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 an entrepreneurial group called Shank Minds. We have about 200 people in it. You're a member. And I'm a member. And, and, yeah. And the beauty of Shank Minds is that we have, um, you know, you can join. And again, it's a, it's a way to not be alone in the entrepreneurial journey. It's, it's wonderful. Every once in a while, someone will leave and they'll say, you know what, Peter, I really like the group. It was really good. I just, I just don't have the time. And I'll ask them where they live. And they say, why? I said, well, I just want to make sure I'm pretty sure that where you live and where I live, both places, the earth spins around the sun at exactly the same speed, right? And so if that's the case, then I have the time, which means that you should have the time. So it's not that you don't have the time. It's that you don't have the priority. And that's okay, but let's call it what it is. Everyone has the same amount of time, right? So instead of thinking about, oh, I don't have time, I, sh I suggest you think about what's your most important priority. Mm -hmm. I have a friend who always asks me, God, I wish I could get up at 4 a.m. and work out. I wish I could get up at 5 a.m. You're amazing. I don't know how you do that. I'm like, well, I've, I've seen you on Facebook liking stuff at 1.30 in the morning. I, I'm pretty sure if you didn't do that, you'd, you'd be able to get, you know. That's so true. It's, it's that concept of what's in, and again, I'm not, if you want to be on Facebook at 1.30 in the morning, great. But, you know, to get something, you have to give something else up. It's true. Sean? It's well, guys, I think that's really true. And I, and I think, uh, uh, and we were talking about this a little bit before the, before the show, uh, Ramon, maybe some of the problem is this, this, this idea of, of, of normal. You know, I, I had a bo boss early in my career who sold his newspaper to a, a, a big corporate giant. I won't mention any names, but he had a newspaper that he had built from a small family newspaper, built it up to nine newspapers, and, and, uh, and it, it worked great. Uh, everybody, uh, you know, he had hired all these, uh, the most oddball uh, lot of people. And, uh, you know, they were all paid different. They all worked different hours. They all, but the, the organization worked beautifully. And uh, he sold it to a big corporation. The first thing they did was come in with an efficiency expert and said, well, what's going on here? I mean, what, I mean, this guy's got to, I mean, everybody's got to come in at the same hours and every, they streamlined everything. Mm -hmm. uh, the paper was under completely underwater in less than two years. And uh, I have to believe that it had something to do with that. It had something to do with just completely ignoring, uh, you know, the human resource part of the equation and just saying uh, everything comes down to there's this bare minimum of normal that you ought to have and everybody ought to fit into it. And if they don't, there's something wrong. And um, it's probably, it, it, it's a luxury that small businesses and entrepreneurs have when they start up. Maybe it's not a, a, a something that big corporations have, but uh, it, it sure has an effect. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, for sure. And Peter, I'd like to leave you with the last word to close us out and summarize for us, but I do want to shout it again and underline, well, three things. One, definitely check out Peter's book, Faster Than Normal. It's, it's been a great resource, and it's not just for those with ADHD or other things like that, but uh, for everybody. And two, uh, definitely check out Peter's website, Shank Minds. Now, Peter, is the event you're doing in January on Shank Minds, is it, it's off there? Yeah. It is shankminds.com slash NYC. We have a 75 person in-person event uh, to complement our online group. It's going to be, we're about half sold out. It's going to be an amazing day. Yeah, it, it is epic, epic. I go there to steal all of Peter's uh, speakers and, <laughs> and find people. To, it's a cheap way for me to connect. Sean, you should just drive in from Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm seeing a year's worth of interviews for the website. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's the cheapest resource you'll get, so it's useful. But Peter, anything you wanted to add? And then Sean, you please briefly add, and then I'll close this out and summarize. This has been a great discussion, but Peter, anything you wanted to add and shout out to us or tell us as we close this discussion out? Yeah, I'll just say that, you know, I, I'm a big believer that if you've had any success whatsoever, you have a responsibility to send the elevator back down. And so I encourage anyone who needs to or wants to feel free to reach out. I'm, I'm at Peter Shankman on all the socials and my email is Peter at Shankman.com. Awesome. Sean, anything you want to add and uh, as we close out this uh, great episode of Hot Seat? Hey, I just think it's a shame that we've had to wait to, to identify all kinds of uh, special uh, differences and things to realize that people are individuals and that they all work differently. Uh, I mean, it seems like a pretty common sense idea and anybody who's managed, managed a really small business and actually knows their employees uh, kind of knows that people are different and that they have different strengths. It, it's just too bad that we have to come up with terms and, and differences and stigmas to, to, to come to that conclusion. Absolutely. 
And with that, this has been Hot Seat, a production of Small Business Trends. Uh, we've had uh, Sean Hessinger, Executive Editor of Small Business Trends, Peter Shankman, my friend, an entrepreneur, speaker, skydiver, runner, all kind of things. You can find him at Shank Minds uh, and actually join the group of members as well. And again, I'm Ramon Ray with SmartHustle.com. And this has been Hot Seat by Small Business Trends.